Welcome to the channel, everybody. It's time for more Arizona Cardinals Rebuild Franchise action. We're here in week eight, the trade deadline. I have some decisions to make on some key veterans for this team that is currently five and two on the season. We're off to a good start playing some good football, but still I gotta make some tough decisions. And also, I wanna work on this stadium now. I got your feedback last episode and we're not going to build a brand new stadium. We already have a level five stadium, which is the highest you can have, and we can just work on upgrading it. And I think that would be kind of fun. What do you want upgraded the most, however? Seating, that might actually help us make a bit more money. Most of this is about $30 million. Parking, nah, they'll figure it out. Let's go concessions. We are upgrading concessions. Did I already pay for it? Apparently. While we're at it, let's also pay for upgraded seating. I could renovate the whole thing, really. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Overall, when we look at our roster, I do like a lot of what we have. And the players that are lower rated at least have a good path forward. That includes Holiday, Wallace, Russell, and Salisbury on defense. And then the receivers that have been proven to produce on the offensive side. I do think there are a few players who are expendable. That would be perhaps Isaac White. That would be a risky move. I also think that it would be risky to move on from Denard Huval. The other player I'd be a little more open to maybe trading is actually Jared Strojny, whose contract is up at the end of this season, and we could always look at replacing him with somebody like Stephen Harding, who is in his second season and could probably take over that role and do fairly well, but is trading an 80 overall guard that's 30 years old really going to make a big difference for us? Well, let's find out. I've got to show you something I found here. I was looking at just areas we could upgrade. We can almost go straight up Jared Strojny for Harmon Conley here of the Buccaneers. This is a move we could make, but I'm a little hesitant to make it to finish off this deal. He's 26 years old, 6'4", possession receiver, decent speed, and route running abilities. Like, he'd be a great upgrade for us. My hang-up is his contract. It looks like he's toward the beginning of a four-year contract that's going to pay him quite a bit over the course of this deal. Do we really want a wide receiver who's an 84 overall and might not get a whole lot better to have these cap hits over the next few seasons? We could even try getting their top wide receiver, Walker Onobon, one of the best receivers in the league. What's he rated? The number four guy with great speed, excellent route running where we need it. He's only 26. I've got to take a look at this contract. Yeah, those numbers are pretty large as well. He got paid a lot, four years, $61 million. I've been thinking about this now quite a bit, and I think adding another good receiver to this team would help put us over the edge so we can make a playoff run this season. Our passing game has taken a little step back this year, but I think if we brought in a veteran presence that could make some plays like Walker Onobun, that could make the difference for us. He has that deep speed. He's a very good route runner, great release, great hands. It would be very expensive, for the rest of his contract but I think this is a move that we can handle making but it will make things a little tricky when it comes to signing all these offensive linemen this offseason and eventually of course you have the quarterback JW Unger but I think I'm prepared to make this move happen it's not going to be as easy as getting his teammates but we can close that gap the deal is done we have added Walker Onobun to the roster in exchange for Jared Strojny, Pierce Hamilton, and a fourth round pick. Hamilton was never really going to get a great shot if we added somebody like Onobun, and we already have some other receivers that we're working on developing. Strojny, I felt like we could just replace, and now we can get Stephen Harding immediate playing time, and we had the draft capital to trade. So the deal is done. When I sat down to do this episode, I did not intend on making a deal for a, a top wide receiver. But here we are. Walker Onobun is now an Arizona Cardinal. He is only 26 years old, so he's still going to be able to develop and not regress, maybe more importantly. 
And he's on a four-year contract, so they'll take him to age 30. He has great speed, like I said. Now, the stats are a little underwhelming because it's just the way Madden is this year, last few years with this simulating. So he's never had a 1,000-yard campaign, but I'm telling you with those ratings, I'm not really worried about it. I'm excited to see what he can do. I saw that with his traits, he has, like, aggressive catch, possession, all that good stuff, but, but, there is drops open passes with him so we'll see if that arises but now Stephen Harding who's already a scheme fit becomes the starting left guard and we can plug him right in that puts our salary cap space at 25.6 we're still doing pretty well there and you can see the cap hits do increase 18.3 by the time we get to 2030 so it'll be one of the higher ones for sure but I think that it's okay to pay one of these top flight wide receivers. And he's already partway into this contract. Okay. The Buccaneers were only 3-3. Three and three. I try to trade with teams who aren't really in position to do a whole lot. So the Buccaneers were one of those teams that they might be buyers, they might be sellers, but they sure wanted Strajny a lot. And they're willing to give up a top receiver. So the move is made. That might be all we do. Now, does that mean Isaac White is even more expendable? I mean, we could recoup that four, yes, by trading him. But I, I still don't think I want to trade Isaac White. I think that he's still a really good player. He still might be needed. And plus, I just don't want to trade him. He's meant a lot to this series, and I still think he's a good player that'll get on the field every now and then. And if someone gets hurt, I want him to step up and play. Walters is the number five guy right now, and I'd still like to see what he can do. Obviously, he was our first receiver selected this past offseason. So we've definitely made some changes here at the skill positions. And hopefully it makes a, a big difference. I can't wait to watch him play today. In our first game with Walker Ono Bun on the team, we lose to the Chicago Bears, who were previously undefeated. This was going to be a really tough game, and I chose not to play it. J.W. Unger did not play particularly well, and it's been... Uh, a step back here in year three. I know Anton Greenberry's worst year as a starter was his year three. Jason Lemon had a really big day. We have playmakers on this offense, and this is the best game by far for Jason Lemon. Receiving, Walker Onobon did have a touchdown and 49 yards receiving. Caldwell had 42 yards. Young had 44. A sack for Bosa, a pick for Lamarcus Russell, but the Cardinals can't get it done. That's a game, though, where we might not win that game against a, a high top-tier opponent like that. And then the Rams game is going to be next. I want to watch that Saints game, though. At the midway point, your team's in a good spot. How far do you think this team can go? We're going with the aggressive one. I want to take this team to the Super Bowl. You don't make a trade for a receiver like Walker Ono Bun because you just want to hopefully get a wild card. No, we got to go far. That's a big win for us right there. We hold off the Rams for a 35 to 30 victory to hang on to first place in the division. And that's the JW Unger we need to see. Four touchdowns coming off the bye, only five incompletions. One of the best games, one of the best stat lines you'll ever see from him. Todd Gurley did run well against us, so that's a concern. Martavis Caldwell went over 100, so did Onobun. I'm hoping that just the addition of another really good receiver makes things overall better for everybody. Joey Bosa gets another sack, an interception for Buda Baker. Nice job, we got ourselves a very quality win. And that certainly helps right there. J.W. Unger, Offensive Player of the Week. And Teal won it for the Rams with just 14 tackles. That is the most basic stat line that I've ever seen win a Player of the Week honor. So next up we get the Packers. And they're a 5-4 and four team. And then we'll watch the Saints game. Looks like there is an injury, though. Hopefully it's not a major one. And it is Jalen Smith. He is going to be out now for a while. And Lucas McAllister is now fully healthy. So we can return Lucas McAllister from injured reserve. Jalen Smith is now hurt. He's going to miss a lot of time the rest of the regular season, it looks like and maybe be back for the postseason. But how about that? The offense gets a lot stronger today with Walker Onobon and McAllister returning. Why did Harding get benched there? 
I already had him as the starter. Don't know. But let's do some upgrading now. Looks like JW Unger has one and a few more. Got to go with that scheme fit here for J-Dub, 87 overall, and it's all going to deep accuracy. Gilbert Vaughn gets to upgrade. It's a big season for him, also considering that the top, um, Howard Iwabima, he's a free agent after this year as our top defensive tackle. Marshall Donaldson, he is all about that pass rush. I should move him to end. It's just I know where I want players so I don't always change their official position, but it probably would be good just because then they can get the other archetypes. Here's Moses Humphrey, who is a good cover linebacker. Might be someone we use a little more moving forward in the future. Let's go past coverage with him. And Humphrey gets four up, including three into man coverage. It's another win, and I think the addition of Ono Bun had to have been a good one because we're having to win these high-scoring games, and I just felt like we had to get a little more offensive firepower. J-Dub throws three touchdowns and a pick, Jason Lemon for a buck 30 and a score, and Walker Ono Bun had a touchdown, so did Caldwell, McAllister's back, Bradley Young for 89 and a score. I'm really liking the decision to get Walker Ono Bun. And how about Aaron Campbell? 75 yard touchdown for him. Holiday had 11 tackles, three sacks for Howard Iwabima. Lots of upgrades here for some skill players. Martavis Caldwell is up first. I do want him to be a receiver of the future for us. I love his skill set. That short route running probably has to get a lot better just because we do throw a lot of short passes as we've seen from all the games we've been watching. So possession's gonna be what we choose today. A lot of stuff gets better. A little bit of short route running. Probably never gonna be great at it, but we've gotta get it a little bit better. And then Bradley Young, star dev, 75 overall. Hands gotta get better for sure. We're gonna go slot with him. That's what he's playing right now, and that's a lot of upgrades. Ones across the board. How about Bradley Sneed? He's been really good since we drafted him. He's also been a great receiver without great hands or great speed. So he's one of the more interesting players we've had on this team. I think I have to stay with the blocking archetypes with him though. Probably for the best. And what do we got today? Sneed with some good pass blocking. Not sure when he'll do that. And then Devontae Steed. I wish it was a little bit easier to develop some of these undrafted guys. I wish you could do a little more with them besides just obviously starting them when they're clearly not ready. But Steed was always an interesting talent. He'll probably be a long-term backup for us. That's a nice role as well. A few more upgrades after training. Aaron Howell gets another upgrade. Thankfully, we already have him signed for the long term. Let's get that man coverage into the 90s now for one of the top cornerbacks we've had. Deontay Wallace continues to produce. You can't argue with his production. Let's go pass coverage with him. I'm tempted to change him to a middle linebacker so he can get the field general upgrade, but... He's really good. These are solid ratings. I wish the speed was a little bit better. Jose Hayes is always going to be a pure run stopper for us, so I can't see me ever putting an archetype, a point into any other archetype than this. Three block shedding. All right. So that's going to take us to this matchup then against the New Orleans Saints. They won a Super Bowl a couple of years back. This is a potential playoff preview. They have eight victories. We have seven Let's check out what the Saints have. They have one of the top left tackles, maybe the best, in Raymond Snyder, who's only 25 years old. These are pretty incredible ratings. Wow. A great center, a great quarterback, a great running back, Marshawn Lattimore. It's a solid team here. So Charles Brenner, he's obviously been their quarterback for a little while now, helped them win a Super Bowl, very accurate good replacement for Drew Brees. Here are his stats throughout the course of his career. Dion Finney has really good speed, so we're going to have to make sure we don't let him find open space. Devon Del Greco is 24 and a receiver on the rise in this league. This is what happens when you get production out of a star development young receiver. We're hoping we can do that with Bradley Young. 
He never developed? Remember when I tried to trade for Stefan Sutton as a rookie and they wouldn't because he was a rookie and I didn't realize that? I can't believe he never developed into like a star. He was, he had really good ratings as a rookie. Exactly what you look for in a three down guy. Yet he's still only a 75 overall. That's a shock to me. He's got tackles, a few interceptions, and then hard to really take much from the catches allowed. I wish it showed touchdowns allowed. That'd be helpful. But I guess he never developed like I thought he would. One of our biggest matchups left on the schedule. I love games like this where we can find out what kind of a team we are. And I can't wait to see the new addition of Walker Ono Bun and what this offense can do. We have serious speed, serious talent. This team should be better than before. We currently lead our division. Although the Rams are there at 5-5, five and five. San Francisco's in the mix this year. So we have some work to do. And the Bears are still undefeated too. And we get underway. It starts with a completion over the middle with a flag. So maybe nothing here for New Orleans. Here's a give inside. And Alvin Kamara is still apparently a saint. I missed that. Fake to Kamara. And to the outside on target. That's a reception. Brenner. For 15 yards to Devon Del Greco. He's their top receiver. Runner back to pass on second down. Downfield. It's caught. Out of bounds in Cardinal territory. So think about how far into the future we are in this series. The Saints still have Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. That's still pretty cool. We only have one original player. Renner short and Wallace. Oh, he got caught off balance. Did not look good there. New set of downs with the Saints rolling, and that ball is knocked out. Buda Baker. Third down now for the Saints. Renner has time with good protection, and that ball is broken up. Lamarcus Russell breaks it out of the hands of Michael Thomas. Top of the screen, Walker Onobun wearing number 17. I did have it changed from 80. First and 10 for Arizona. Put on a show, J-Dub. I'm ready. I'm not even sure what to say about that. Split backs now for the Cardinals. And Unger downfield. That is holding Walker Onobun. He had six catches last week. He has produced so far since joining the Cardinals. I want this to be his first 1,000-year campaign. Getting a 1,000 in Madden is harder than it should be. Sneed in motion, and it's going to be a run. And Lemon has nowhere to go. Linebacker is a strength of this defense. I'll be interested in how Pierce Hamilton produces for Tampa because he should be a starting receiver right away for them. On second down, complete. Spinning away, that is Onobun for the first down. I can't believe I made that trade. And did you notice that now the two highest rated players on our team were both acquired by trade? Fake from Unger. On first down, on target for Caldwell. Part of why I made this trade is because I knew it would make things a little bit easier on Martavis Caldwell. What do you think will help develop him more? Lining up against number ones all day? Or probably number twos. I think for a guy who still needs some refinement with route running and stuff, I'd like to see him against those twos. Oh, down goes J-Dub. Both of our starting tackles are free agents after this season. I have a, a tricky situation with the line this year as Ono Bun makes the catch. What I've been thinking lately is I can't just do it the way I did with the Browns. Maybe I can. But right now I'm thinking that I, I can't just keep paying offensive linemen forever and we're getting to a tough spot where two tackles are going to be in the 30s wanting big money here's Unger it's caught and going for the touchdown Bradley Young that is the explosiveness this offense needed let's go it's four verticals defeating cover three it's hard to close this gap the safety is put into one of the toughest spots a safety can be no matter where you go, you're leaving someone open. 
and it's really hard to close the gap and that speed difference on full display. Good start, Bosa sacks Charles Brenner. And on third and 17, the Saints don't convert. Let's get it back and keep getting points. Ono Bun for nine, already at about four catches, I think. McAllister for five, first down for Sneed. That'll put us in the red zone. A yard for JT King and thrown away. We'll take the field goal there. Here are the Saints taking over, and that ball gets ripped away as well. And that time it was Hayes. Third and ten, we got some pressure, and the pass is caught. That could have been jumped and taken to the house. So let's keep it going. The Cardinals take over. Two scoring possessions already into the day as Jason Lemon, he broke out a little hurdle there. Unger throwing over the middle and finding McAllister. This team is not going to be a fun defensive matchup for any secondary. And I'm hoping that what we've done today can make the rest of Unger's year a complete difference. Hopefully less turnovers and a lot more big plays. Here's Lemon, not much. Unger right back to the air. He's going downfield on second down, but it's out of bounds. Two receivers top of the screen. Unger protected, throws to the middle, and Bradley Young is taken down shy of the sticks as Isaiah Wynn is shaken up, and that could be a really big deal. Hopefully he's all right. Saints take it, third down. They got it this time. No three and out, but how about a six and out? There we go. Ono Bun for 24. I love seeing that. Seven for Lemon. Knocked away. Just got enough. Bradley Young steps up again. A penalty on Harding. With this first half winding down. Come on, guys. 24 to Caldwell. 19 to JT King. And a touchdown for Jason Lemon. Increasing our lead to two touchdowns. 14-point game as the Saints take over. Big drive here before the half, and that is not going to get them far. The Saints are very one-dimensional today. Just four runs and 16 passes, and a failed run here takes us to the warning. Everybody in tight on third down. Watch the out routes. Brenner, short for Camara, and he won't get it. He's stopped. And there's another play made by LaMarcus Russell. The Cardinals take over, and now they have a chance to add more points. They gotta go a long ways though. Unger gets a chunk here, complete to Walker Onobun. Doesn't this just look so different compared to the first couple games we watched this season? Here we have 46 seconds left, it's third and eight. Can J-Dub get it? McAllister in the flats is wrapped up on the catch. And he is stopped. Wow, three straight incompletions out of New Orleans. They couldn't do anything there. And on we go to the second half. Really happy with our team today. I think, oh, that fumble is really unlucky. And the Saints are already in range. Oh, Mark Andrews. Touchdown, Deion Finney. We got ourselves a game again. I'll have to see exactly who fumbled there. I'm going to assume Jason Lemon, but it could have also been a sack fumble. Here is Jason Lemon carrying up the right side, spins away, Lemon across the 50, and Marcus Williams saves the touchdown. There we go. You know, I've been thinking a lot about who would the pro comparison be for Jason Lemon. When we drafted him, I hoped we were getting another Perry Cummings. I don't think he's Perry Cummings. You might not like the comp, but I think if I explain it a little bit more, it'll make sense. But I think Jason Lemon is Lamar Miller. I think they have a similar build. I think that they're both guys who are three down backs, although they might not be the most elusive, the fastest guys. The difference, well, they both catch the football well too, but the difference I think is that Lamar Miller has shown more big play potential, I think, throughout his career. With Lemon, he just 
consistently gets those decent chunks, moves the chains, usually. Although, now would have been a good time to actually do that. Please go for it. I don't think they will. But we can go up two scores. The kick is up cleanly, but short! 51 indoors is no good? Alright, put kicker at the top of our needs. Seriously, I didn't think his kick power dropped that significantly. This is a pretty big possession here. The Saints could tie it, so let's jump in. I don't think that his kick power is in the 80s. I suppose it could be, though, if he can't hit a 51. Is it possible for not max power from the CPU kicker? Here's a fake from Brenner. He wants the big play, and there's no one covering Mark Andrews. Misdirection. Finney! Oh, what a stop. Howard Iwabima is looking more valuable every episode. Third down now in field goal range for New Orleans. Brenner protected. Wants the big play. And this one's going to take him inside the five. Good throw and catch from the Saints. I'm not sure who 87 is. Devon Del Greco wears 85. Oh, it's Chamberlain. So first and goal, nice stop in the backfield. There's Salisbury. Let's go. Brenner, second and goal, chased by Wallace. He'll lose a bunch. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's how you blitz. A well-executed blitz is one of the greatest things in the sport. Third and goal, Brenner, will he get risky? He will! Out of the back of the end zone, Michael Thomas! No way! Full feet in bounds, that's worth the review! How do you allow that? How is that clipboard still in one piece? I would have that thing shattered! Booth review. This was one I'm actually not sure about. But usually these will stand. We don't get a great angle at it. I think this stands. Just, that's my gut feeling right now. Yeah, it did stand. And the Saints have tied this game up. So I want to check that one more time, please. Whenever you give a quarterback too much time, you're risking this happening. Howell's covering Del Greco. And he doesn't just have eyes in the back of his head to uh, do anything about this. Del Greco actually, like, sets a pick in a way. And that's a, that's a clean catch. Well, there goes that 17-3 lead. So now Arizona, can you get the offense rolling again? It could be blitzing here. They are. It's a short throw for Caldwell. He can't escape. Yeah, same look here. They're rolling the safety. They're blitzing again. Short throw. Get away. Hey, look, it's Isaac White. I think that not trading Isaac White is going to be a very unpopular decision. But I like having him as insurance, as that fourth receiver. And this is Jason Lemon with a really good run. Obviously, a third or fourth round pick would be nice to have. But we're trying to make a Super Bowl run this year, and I didn't want to make the team worse. And trading White does make us worse. Second down in inches. This is going up the middle to Lemon. Obviously... We downgraded that guard to upgrade heavily at wide receiver. But, I mean, there was going to be nothing else to do after trading Isaac White. Just get the pick. Nah. Third down. Lemon gets free. And he'll take it into Saints territory. Nearly 100 yards on the day. We are on to the fourth quarter in Arizona. Unger on second down. Across the middle to McAllister. Taken down hard by the face mask. Wow, that was a blatant face mask. And that's going to put us in the red zone. First and goal for Arizona. Unger outside for Lemon, who can't get around the linebacker. Seven-yard line. Unger has time, and a touchdown! Isaac White gives the Cardinals a fourth quarter lead. He produces, he gets it done. That is awesome. Good timing, Isaac White. 
24-17 for New Orleans. Brenner underneath wants Kamara. Has him for a big gain into Cardinal territory. Look what Kamara did on one play and then consider that Jason Lemon has four catches and seven yards. First and ten. Back inside of Cardinal territory. Floated and knocked away by Wallace. Brenner almost got picked. Brenner sets up the screen. They got it in the hands of Finney. Nice job by Bosa. Third down and 11. That's knocked away. Bosa in coverage. What on earth do we call some zone blitz? Joey can do it all. Cardinals have it up seven. And we'll see what they can do on this drive. Getting 15 to Bradley Young. Getting a lot of production here from all the main playmakers on this offense. It's great to see. Even Isaac White now at three catches. Sacked inside the 10. Thrown away. Thrown away. The kick is good. So the Saints are down 10. Not much time on the clock. Looks like we're close to victory if we don't throw this away. Brenner has three minutes to pull off a 10-point comeback. And with a flag down, that's Mark Andrews for about seven. I'm calling it. We're going to seal this game with an interception. It's just been so close too many times. First and 20 for Brenner. And that's not going to get them enough. Two deep safeties for the Cardinals. Hopefully no big plays. Third down. Saints need eight. Brenner found his man. Mark Andrews gets tripped up. He could have gone for a while if Russell didn't make that play. From the 47, open down the sideline to Von Del Greco inside the 25. Saints are not giving up, and if they get these points without using a timeout, it's going to be a pressure situation. Here's Brenner on first down, retreating, now firing out of bounds. Now they go compact. And that ball is caught by Del Greco on the slant. Split backs here for the Saints. Trying to put this in the end zone. It's intercepted. We got it. It is picked off by Denard Huval. And Arizona's just a minute 22 from sealing another big victory. How about that for a storyline? Not only do we go get Walker Onobun this episode, but who made the plays late? The two players who have been on the trade block all season. Isaac White with the game-winning touchdown, essentially, and Denard Huval seals this and prevents the game from getting out of hand. Cardinals win 27-17. It was a great episode. One of my favorites, I believe, in a long time. It's one of those episodes where I really can't wait to read the comments after a few hours when it's posted. That was fun. Very good day from J.W. Unger. I was happy with his performance. Lemons as well, a buck 22. We haven't watched many of those from him. And then, obviously, the receivers. No one gets, like, a huge day. But you have three receivers or four over 60, you're doing something right. And then defensively, Joey Bosa, shout out to him. A couple tackles for loss, a pass deflection. We have a good football team. So we made a lot of progress today significantly. And we have three division games to close out the schedule once we get past the Viking and Ravens games. And the 49ers are now in second place. So I think next episode, I've got to see if any of these playoff or these division games become a big deal. But I think what's most likely to happen is that we watch Week 17 because it's the last game of the regular season, and it could be an important one. We'll see. Oh, wow. Since the trade, the Buccaneers have improved their record to 6-5. and five. So despite trading away their top receiver, they might be okay. They put up 500 yards in their most recent game. And it looks like, who stepped up? They play into Shante Church, who had a really big day. I thought it would be Pierce Hamilton, but it looks like he's not even getting on the field. We'll wrap up by checking out the stats. J.W. Unger now 
a two to one ratio touchdowns to interceptions. Jason Lemon over 1,000 yards rushing with plenty of games left on the schedule. Receiving, Ono Bun closing in on 1,000 yards. So is Caldwell. Bradley Young, you never know the way he gets his yards, it could happen. Lamarcus Russell leads the team in tackles this year, also has two interceptions. We have some good linebackers. And tell me, don't you think there's a chance that Lamarcus Russell or Deontay Wallace can make the Pro Bowl? That'd be big time. I also think that Russell would have a pretty good chance of winning Rookie of the Year. And that would be huge. Anyway, that is going to end the episode, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your feedback down below. This was a very fun one for me, so I hope you had a good time. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.